Symmetry, it's when you do something to an object, like rotate it, flip it, or invert it, and it still looks the same afterward. Everything in nature is fundamentally symmetrical, and mathematically we can prove that, but we won't today. Instead, we'll focus on symmetry in chemistry, which is actually super useful. For example, take two simple linear molecules, H2 and hydrochloric acid. They're both linear, but they aren't equally symmetrical. If you flip them end to end, H2 looks identical, so both sides are hydrogen, while hydrochloric acid doesn't, because hydrogen and chlorine are different atoms. And that difference in symmetry is why H2 is nonpolar, while hydrochloric acid has a permanent dipole. So this simple idea already connects symmetry to molecular properties. And that's why symmetry matters in chemistry. It helps us predict many things, like whether molecules are polar or nonpolar, which vibrations will show up in IR or Raman graphs, how atomic orbitals combine in molecular orbital theory, which reactions are allowed or forbidden, and many more. So how do we figure out molecular symmetry? We look at two things, symmetry elements and symmetry operations. Symmetry elements, which are like features on which you perform symmetry operations, are E for identity, CN for proper rotation, sigma for mirror plane, I for inversion, and SN for improper rotation. So then each element has a corresponding operation. Identity leaves the molecule unchanged. Proper rotation rotates by 360 degrees divided by N about the axis. So for example, C3 is a 120 degree rotation because N equals three. Mirror plane reflects across a mirror plane. For example, X, Y, and Z becomes X, negative Y, Z. Inversion inverts all coordinates through the origin. So X, Y, and Z become negative X, negative Y, and negative Z. And improper rotation rotates by 360 degrees divided by N, then reflects across a plane perpendicular to the rotation axis. Now, to help us understand this better, let's quickly apply these to some real molecules. Identity. Take methane. The identity operation simply means doing nothing. You leave the molecule exactly as it is, and of course it looks the same. Every molecule has this operation by default, which is why every molecule has at least one symmetry operation. Even if this is very simple and seems stupid, it's important later on. Proper rotation. In ammonia, you can rotate the molecule 120 degrees, which is 360 divided by three. So we call it a C3 rotation around the nitrogen atom. This swaps the three nitrogens into each other's positions, but the molecule still looks exactly the same. Many molecules actually have multiple rotation axes. For example, xenon tetrafluoride can rotate 180 degrees around the axis, so that's C2, but it also has a higher rotation axis where you can rotate it by 90 degrees at a time or four times in a full turn, and that's called a C4 axis. The rotation axis with the highest end value is called the principal rotation axis. So for xenon tetrafluoride, its principal axis is C4. Mirror plane or reflection. Water has a vertical mirror plane that cuts straight through the oxygen atom and between the two hydrogens. If you reflect the molecules across this plane, the two hydrogens swap places, but the molecule looks identical. Molecules can have multiple mirror planes, vertical, horizontal, or dihedral depending on how they align with the molecule's principal axis. Inversion. Benzene has an inversion center right in the middle of the ring. If you invert every atom through this point, meaning you take each atom at x, y, z and move them to negative x, negative y, and negative z, you end up with the same molecule. Molecules with inversion centers are often nonpolar and highly symmetric. Not all molecules though, have this. For example, water doesn't. Improper rotation. Methane has S4 symmetry. For this, you rotate the molecule 90 degrees 
and then reflect it through a plane that is perpendicular to the rotation axis. After doing both steps, the hydrogens have swapped around, but the molecule looks unchanged. Improper rotations are common in highly symmetric molecules, but are absent in chiral molecules. And this is one of the reasons why chirality actually exists. So once we know which symmetry operations a molecule has, we can assign it to a point group, which is a classification that tells us everything about its symmetry. And point groups are the foundation for predicting molecular behavior, but we'll explore this later. Finally, every molecule's order is simply the total number of symmetry operations it has. In the next video, we'll go into point groups and character tables, which combined all these symmetry elements together. But for now, I'll leave practice questions and just remember to find all the symmetry operations that leave the molecule the same. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.